what's going on guys welcome back to the channel we're back again sorry guys excuse the the noise the shop workers are working out there in the back but today say goodbye to the stock ride height yes that's right we are lowering the hellhawk with these um, I think the back ones these back ones are gonna drop it 1.6 inches front one should be dropping at about 1.2 these are Mopar uh, I guess you can say Mopar rebranded springs I don't know who makes them somewhere in some threads I found that um, supposedly iBox springs makes these but um, yeah they're pretty awesome they're Mopar so I know that I don't really care about factory warranty but in case anything happens with suspension that's a uh, Mopar part so they can't really tell me nothing so I'm excited to see how it's gonna look I hope you guys are just as excited as I am intake's been running super nice on it you could hear that the the supercharger whine on it I'm thinking of getting a, a sticker that says I whine in the back but um, other than that we're also going to be installing the power stop ceramic carbon ceramics I had an issue with the previous set that I bought contacted power stop and um, shout out to them they uh, they sent me some new ones so um, hopefully I guess I was having a little issue with the squealing and stuff like that um, I sent the pictures and stuff like that and they just decided to send me some new ones so good company they stand behind their product i love that when a company does that so guys i'm gonna walk you through the steps um i already did one time for the brake pads i'm not gonna do that for the brake pads but i am gonna walk you through the suspension and for that you do need to either buy or rent this tool with all the times that i've done this i should just keep it this one I bought it uh, I rented it AutoZone I think uh, with taxes and everything comes out to about $60 and what this does is it basically goes in between these and you compress it with this nut right here and it compresses and um, you have to do use one on each side and you have to be very careful when you use these because if the spring is tensioned and you do not have that and you release the nut i mean this truck weighs five thousand pounds imagine how much how much weight and pressure is pushing on it so if that hits you in the face it could break your i mean i'm pretty sure it could break your face your teeth forget about all that stuff but all right guys so i'll keep you guys updated All right, folks, let me tell you, this shock is a pain in the ass to remove. I've never removed one of these, but once you figure it out, it's not that difficult. So this is where the shock sits, and then this bolt that goes in here like that, it will lock in the shock from ever moving out or, or coming apart. But basically what you have to do is you have to loosen up all this. This one goes right here this one goes down here uh, but the reason is is because once everything is loosened up and and this is also loosened up down there you have to take off that bolt down there right here I think it's a six inch bolt so once you remove that then this wobbles off from the shock you have to take off everything if not um, you won't be able to remove the shock that's what I try to do first without removing all this stuff but once you remove it, it's not that hard to put back in. It's just really, I just didn't want to take off stuff that wasn't necessary. But right now I'm about to put in the shock again. So here it is with its new spring. So this one should lower it about 1.2 inches, according to Mopar. Uh, I don't want to lower it all crazy. The streets in El Paso are really jacked up. But this one should go back in the way that I, I took it out like this. And then, um, We'll, we'll tighten it up with this one again, put in its bolt, lock it back up, 
lift it with the jack here so that the this whole assembly the arm and everything goes up and then we'll tie all these up lock tight everything and up here it's three screws the ones that go in here we'll put lock tight and um, we'll get it all in but it's a pain in the ass i didn't uh, the time last my gopro kind of the battery went out already so um i'm only going to show you guys this side or, or the driver's side and then i want to show you the passenger side so if anybody ever wants to do it unfortunately there's not a lot of stuff out there there's not a lot of videos out there on how to remove this type of things this platform is very similar i mean it's basically the same thing as the srt um vehicle with the srt jeep the only thing that's different is the is the the uh, power plant or the performance platform right but all this stuff is basically identical of how it should be on the srt so uh, like I said, you have to remove all this stuff in order for you to have enough play to be able to move this whole assembly um, in order for you to take out the shock. And yeah, we'll see. I'll show you guys a uh, finished uh, video and everything, pictures. And all right, guys, thank you. All right, guys, so we're on the back side here. These were a lot more simple than the, than the front ones this one we just have to the suspension on these trucks is amazing it's so intricate you got a link here a link here and a link here so i'm gonna move it look it's all designed to to move so in the future i want to upgrade all these all these uh suspension parts just make it more rigid and everything with the horsepower we're gonna be running we're gonna need all the support we can have so it's simple just take off all these links most of these are 18s so what I used was a 18 millimeter wrench to hold in the nuts and then the bolts with the impact gun and um, you basically let everything loose and with the weight once you take off this jack the weight of it goes down and the spring should be able to come out pretty simple so the first one we struggled a little bit because I didn't let go of the I let go of the top um, sway bar end link, but not the bottom one. So the bottom one was holding me out, holding me, holding me up, I should say. So I, I moved it out and I slid it up, and with that I was able to bring it out with no pry bar or anything. But the first one, I mean, we, we were trying to use the pry bar and all that, and it was just becoming a mess. So very simple. Just release all these bolts. Most of them are 18. I believe the this one here for the strut. I believe it's a 21 millimeter. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just with the weight, everything comes off and bring out the old. There's the old one. Put in the new. So I did notice that the difference of the springs. These are a lot. Sm the, I, I guess you could say the gauge of the thickness of these is a lot smaller than the other ones so I hope it's not a flimsy ride if it is I'm gonna hate it I'm gonna have to switch them out again but I don't think so because it's a Mopar product so obviously Mopar is not gonna dedicate to make any type of spring so obviously they're gonna have to it's a rebrand from another company and I had heard on the threads or I had read on the threads that it was Eibach Springs there's not that many companies that make them for the Jeep SRT or the track hop. The only ones that are out there right now is Eibach and I think there's like Black Ops. I don't know, Black Ops something, but it drops it like ridiculous, like three inches on, on each side or something like that. But we're not looking for anything like that. Uh, we just want something to corner a little better, better stance, better handling, better feel. Um, I mean, the streets here are pretty jacked up, so... Uh, I'll show you guys uh, how it looks after. From the front, I mean, obviously it's, it's like leaning forward. It wasn't going to drop it a whole lot from the front, but obviously once you start driving it, everything is going to adjust. So we'll see. I'll give you guys an update on that. Guys, this is an updated look on how the track hawk looks with the new lowering springs 
As you can see, it gives it a much more aggressive look. It gives it a meaner stance. I believe the front dropped it 1.2 inches. And the rear dropped it approximately 1.6. I'll give you guys some nice shots. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, the camber is kind of in. It went in a little bit. So if you guys drop it, you are going to have to get this out realigned. You have to get the alignment done. I don't know at what um, torque specs where all the A-arms and all the connecting links were supposed to be because I am going to get it aligned. So I kind of just went with that German torque specs, you know, good and tight. I do have to replace the tires on it but i'm gonna go with something a little bit different these are the p zeros 295 45 by 20. but i think i'm gonna go with something like i said a little bit more aggressive these tires the original price on them on discount tire direct they're about 500 dollars a piece so think about it i've had if i would have kept the original jeep srt it would have been roughly about a year and a half with these tires because even though I traded the truck in and I got this one new I kept the original wheels and tires <clears throat> so in total it was about this one has about 3,000 miles the other one had 18,000 so about 21,000 miles I had to replace the tires I mean they're still okay but I'm gonna go with something a little more to fit the profile of what we're going for they could last me maybe another year or maybe another six months and that's it but um i think i'm gonna go with like toyo's triple the r triple eight r's and the profile on those is 305 by 35 by 20 so it's gonna drop it a little bit more i don't know how the stance is gonna look i'm gonna do that before i get an alignment and i'm also gonna change out some suspension goodies on it i'm gonna do uh, front and rear differential braces you definitely need that for the amount of torque and horsepower we're going to be putting down uh, and all the back suspension links and all that they're just a lot beefier i think i'm gonna go with something like b woody so i might <clears throat> i might install that first before taking it to get it aligned because anytime you change anything related to suspension, you have to get it aligned. So I'm very happy with the, the springs. The original ones were a lot thicker than these. So I was worried that the suspension was gonna be too bouncy, but no, I love the suspension on this. <clears throat> the ride quality is amazing. You have a much, Cent, uh, lower center of gravity so it takes the turns a lot faster let's say like if you normally take a turn at let's say 30 35 you could take it at 45 now without without i guess overstressing the the vehicle so pretty amazing the install wasn't too bad it's just that i've never done an install like this but you do, you do have to loosen up certain things and at the beginning you're like, what the hell am I doing? But at the end, everything goes back together how it was and that's it. So, you guys tell me what you guys think. <clears throat> we might not be doing a couple more track hog videos because I do have another project that's coming up. And I think that's gonna be the next video after this. So if you guys haven't already, please make sure you guys smash the subscribe button. Please share this with your friends. There's not a lot of track hog videos out there. 
And on the next project car, there's even less videos of those type of trucks. But you guys are going to fall in love with it. Guys, thank you so much. I'm out.